This season has been sensational, hasn't it? A genuine, delectable medley of footballing splendour. I have loved every minute of it. What a season. We have a genuine three-horse race for the title. And what we're going to try and do in this video is explore exactly who will triumph in the closest Premier League season for years. I honestly don't think that anybody has a clue who's actually going to win the league. I think the country is divided. There is bias and tribalism galore when people try and explore exactly who is going to win it. It is so tight. Twists and turns will be awaiting us, but what we need to try and do is drill down into the Premier League, try and use all of the information, all of the data that we have learned about these clubs so far this season, and try and extrapolate from what we have learned already as to who is going to go on and lift the supreme prize. One thing is for sure, it's going to go down to the wire, and I am loving it. Right. Let's get into it. Who is going to actually win the Premier League? Let's start with Liverpool. Okay, context is key. In their past eight games, they have won six, drawn one and lost one. So let's start with reasons why Liverpool will win the league. Let's try and think of all of the reasons why Liverpool will win the league. Why Jurgen Klopp will be victorious. I think I've just hit the nail on the head there. One of the main reasons why Liverpool will win the Premier League is Jurgen Klopp, the brilliance of Jurgen Klopp, the genius of Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp is the best manager in this race. Anybody that doubts it, all they need to do is cast their mind back to when Liverpool played Manchester City at Anfield a couple of days ago. In that encounter, we learned that Jurgen Klopp was supreme. When we looked at the players at Jurgen Klopp's disposal and compared them to the elite level of players at Pep Guardiola's disposal, there was only supposed to be one winner that day. The only victor that day should have been Guardiola. And to be totally frank, he should have done it at a canter. With the exception of Van Dijk and maybe one of Liverpool's forward players, none, literally none of the Liverpool players get in the Manchester City team. And yet, inspired by Jurgen Klopp, invigorated by Jurgen Klopp, educated by Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool should have won the game. They were very unlucky not to win the game. And... Maybe that could be a reason why they won't win it. The fact that they didn't win that game. But we're focusing on the positive here. Jurgen Klopp has to be one of the main reasons, one of the main attributes as to why Liverpool will win the Premier League. You know I'm an old romantic. People always call me a nostalgia merchant and things like that. But there are certain existential things that really do matter with regard to a title race. And there are two things in this metric that matter massively. Those two things are belief the belief that Jurgen Klopp will instill. It's not a tangible thing. You can't touch it. You can't see it on a Premier League table. But there is a belief around this squad. There is a belief around everyone associated with Liverpool. We saw it. They were galvanised by that League Cup victory against Chelsea. They honestly do think something special is happening. Jurgen Klopp's final farewell. They're going to do everything that they can to make sure that he goes out on top. And I think that belief is huge. Alongside that, I place Anfield. Some will say it's bricks and mortar. Some will say it's a mere stadium. Everyone has one. People who know, know. Anfield could be a deciding factor. The Liverpool faithful could be a deciding factor. Listen to this. A lot of my friends were at the League Cup. A lot of my friends were at Wembley when Liverpool beat us in the League Cup final. They were talking about where it went wrong. And the more honest of my friends in that WhatsApp group acknowledged that it was Liverpool fans who actually won that trophy for Liverpool. We can talk about the genius of the players, the young players who came on. We can talk about Klopp getting it right. We can talk about the more experienced players. We can talk about anything you like. But a lot of people in that stadium, a lot of my friends in that stadium, they actually attributed the win to the Liverpool fans. As the second half of extra time started... Liverpool fans started that We've Conquered All of Europe song. And it went on and on and on. We're never going to stop. And it really did invigorate. Simultaneously, look, Chelsea fans, we're not in a good place at the moment. We don't love our manager. We don't love our players. We hate our owners. And we didn't have that same exuberance. So Anfield, the weight of Anfield, the weight of the Liverpool fans could really, really take Liverpool to the title. This is interesting and this is actually huge. I've done the mathematics on this, the quick maths. Liverpool have the easiest fixtures. The average position of the teams that Liverpool have left to play is 10th, which is the lowest of everybody going for the title. So I've really looked at this. I've done the due diligence so that you don't have to. And I've seen exactly where everybody lays. So for example, if Liverpool played a team in 9th and a team in 11th, it would be 10th. And overall, the exact Premier League position of the team that Liverpool face for the rest of the season is 10th, which is a smidge lower than the other two. At home, 
the average team that Liverpool play is in 11th. Away from home, the average team that Liverpool play is in 9th. So overall, they're facing a team 10th. And therefore, we can conclude that Liverpool have the easiest fixtures of the three. Two more reasons as to why Liverpool are going to win the league. Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk. Need I say more? Van Dijk's in the form of his life. Mo Salah is the most guaranteed goal scorer in the Premier League. There is no way that these two aren't going to do everything within their power to drive Liverpool to that title. And if these two get going, who can stop them? OK, now we need to explore exactly why Liverpool will not win the league. I've come up with three reasons and I'm going to tell you them immediately and then I will explore them. Injuries. The result against Manchester City at Anfield just a few days ago, the result at White Hart Lane, back at the beginning of the season. Right, injuries. I know that Liverpool can cope. I know that Jurgen Klopp can make full use of his squad. I know that everybody involved in the Liverpool framework is pulling in the same direction, desperate to make the dreams come true. And we saw the way that Klopp can utilise the squad is actually so impressive. But they're without Alisson. They're without Trent Alexander-Arnold. They're without Diogo Jota. Diogo Jota, he is worth his weight in gold for a goal. I would go so far as to say that if any of those chances that Luis Diaz missed against Manchester City fell to the feet of Diogo Jota, he scores them. Trent Alexander-Arnold is undoubtedly one of Liverpool's most important players. He's undoubtedly one of the Premier League's best players. And the fact that he is out, it feels like it's irreplaceable. You know, certain players, if they're out, you can make it work. Quanza can come in or whatever. Trent Alexander-Arnold has the ability to do things that other mere mortal footballers cannot even see. He can play a pass that really good players cannot even see. Alexis McAllister, for example, fantastic footballer. But Trent Alexander-Arnold has the ability to do things that Alexis McAllister wouldn't even be able to see. He wouldn't even register for him. So losing a player of that quality, he is the very definition of irreplaceable. And therefore, I think this could be a big, big issue as Liverpool proceed and hope to win the title. And Alisson's out. Look, Kelleher's brilliant, but Alisson's out. Anybody that's trying to draw parallels between Kelleher and Alisson, it, it just can't be done, I'm afraid. Alisson is king. Alisson is the best goalkeeper in the league by a considerable distance. And look, Kelleher deputises brilliantly, but I think that's what he is. He is a brilliant deputy. He is not ready to be Liverpool's number one as they move through the season. I also think the result against City at Anfield was a missed opportunity. Liverpool were brilliant. They were so good. They deserved the victory. In that second half, they shone. They created enough chances and they ultimately dropped two points. They were also very unlucky with a penalty at the end. I just think that those two points that they should have managed to get against Manchester City, rather than sharing a point apiece, imagine how things would feel now if Liverpool had won that game. And they did everything to win it. They just didn't win it. Those Luis Diaz misses really could haunt them. And now we're going back in time, taking you back in time like Shola Romar. We're going to White Hart Lane. The Luis Diaz goal that was ruled out of White Hart Lane is the biggest travesty that I have ever seen in football, and here's why. It's not that we haven't seen other hateful, ridiculous, appalling decisions in our beautiful game, but it's because on this occasion, something very specific happened. The people in charge told us that they knew, they knew that they had made the wrong decision. They knew that the goal should have stood. They knew that Luis Diaz's goal was legitimate, and they knew that Liverpool were robbed. And yet, still, they did nothing. They did not do the bold, brave, righteous thing and pull the game back. Liverpool, as a result, lost the game. It's the only game that they'd lost until very recently. It was the first game that they'd lost all season, which changes the trajectory of everything. And at the very least, very least, Liverpool would have one more point today. Probably three more. Huge. Here we go. Arsenal Football Club. I can't say that I'm going to enjoy this section very much, but here we go. Here are the reasons why Arsenal Football Club are going to end their two-decade drought for a Premier League title. There is one incredibly simple reason as to why Arsenal will win the league. They're the best team in the country at the moment by a distance. Their form is unbelievable. They have won nine league games in a row. They have won every single league game that they have played this calendar year. They are now so resilient they are no longer a soft touch. The days where we could laugh at Arsenal for having a weak underbelly, the days that we questioned the minerals and the attitude in that team are well and truly over. This Arsenal team are full of it. They are warriors. They have Declan Rice in the midfield, who is gladiatorial. They have players who clearly fight to the end. They have a spine 
that are desperate to win. And in players like Gabriel, Kai Havertz, William Saliba, Martin Odegaard, they clearly have players who are capable of winning the very best and biggest trophies in the world. Another factor that is huge for Arsenal, their goal difference. Fairly recently in two games, they won 6-0. That's a plus 12 goal difference in two games. This title race is so tight. There is a Rizla paper between these three teams and it could well come down to goal difference. Arsenal's goal difference is sensational. They score more goals than anyone else. They concede less goals than anyone else. As a recipe in football, that's a pretty good one. It tastes fairly nice. If you score a lot of goals and you don't concede many, they score for fun. They really do. You know, fairly recently they scored, what, six Five different goal scorers, one that was an own goal. Five different players on the score sheet. That is huge. Sharing the goals out, that is a team of winners. That is a team of potential champions. When you aren't reliant on one particular goal scorer, I think it's huge. There was this clamber, wasn't there, fairly recently. Arsenal need Tony. Arsenal need that centre forward. I often argued that they didn't. Sharing the goals out, having half a dozen players, all scoring in excess of 10, is so much more impressive. And they really are sharing the goals out. You know, you've got Ben White. Since he came back from Dubai, he is the best player in that Arsenal team. He has been sensational. He should be starting for England. Maybe out of position, but his form determines that he should be starting for England. Absolutely sensational. Get that man a tan, because when he's tanned, off the back of his winter trip to Dubai, absolutely unreal. Gabriel, best defender in the league, arguably. Absolutely unreal. Goals at both ends. Such a thorn in the side. When Arsenal attack... He's up there. When Arsenal attack, Ben White. Have you seen him on corners? They are just brilliant in both boxes. And they don't concede goals. They've basically scored 40 goals this calendar year and conceded four. And even when they do concede, it's not as if somebody has worked them out, tactically worked out Arteta, found a way to incisively slip through, found a way to maybe exploit the imagined weakness of Saliba, found a way to somehow find a chink in the armour. It's not that. Even when they concede, look at the goals they've conceded this year. There's only four of them. Every single one, individual error. Most recently, the idiocy from Aaron Ramsdale. They are top of the league. That in itself is symbolic and their players are fit. You know how we were talking about Liverpool having so many injured players? You know, Thomas Partey is coming back to full fitness just at the right time. I would argue that Arsenal's best midfield is Partey, Rice and Odegaard. And we haven't really seen that this year. Are they about to deploy their best, most resilient and most penetrating midfield the business end of the season. Okay, here we go. Reasons Arsenal will not win the Premier League. The standout reason as to why Arsenal won't win the Premier League, where it will slip for Arsenal, if indeed it does slip, because I think we're living in a reality where they could easily be champions. But if it does slip, I think where it will slip it's their away games. Their away form hasn't been brilliant this season. You know, we can remember them losing at Craven Cottage. We can remember them losing at Villa Park. And when you look at the teams that they still have to play away from home, it looks to me like there are potentially a lot of tricky fixtures, a lot of banana skin fixtures. And Arsenal really will have to be at their best to make sure that they maximise their output and accrue the three points in the vast majority of those games. Their form away from home is a concern as well. You know, I think if you look at the league table, and I know that this is a slightly misleading stat because they still have to play a lot of these teams. But I think they've only beaten West Ham away. You know, you think even at Stamford Bridge, they didn't get a victory. And yes, a lot of their fixtures away from home are still to come. That in itself is a reason why they won't win the league. And that is a reason to explain why their record away from home doesn't look good against teams in the top. But really tricky fixtures. And they're playing teams who are going to be so up for it. Now, you know that I will always embrace the rivalry and the history and the antipathy between teams. I think it's what football is about. I love the rivalry. And Arsenal are very unfortunate that they are playing a lot of teams who will be desperate to stop them winning the league. They travel to Tottenham. Tottenham's entire season now will revolve around stopping Arsenal winning the league. Tottenham's entire season will revolve around preserving this 20-year hiatus where Arsenal have not won the league. If you are a Tottenham fan, I honestly ask you this question. Would you rather... Arsenal don't win the league and you don't make top four. I think that Tottenham fans, their priority is for Arsenal to not win the league. So that fixture, when Arsenal travel to Tottenham, that fixture is going to be electric. And Tottenham will be doing everything that they can within their power to stop Arsenal that day. And it's not only Tottenham. 
Chelsea travel to Arsenal our entire season now. We're so pathetic. We're a team built only on schadenfreude. I can only find any sort of happiness in football if we do what I'm dreaming we do. Our season now revolves around stopping Arsenal winning the league. So Arsenal are unlucky that they play their rivals. But when you look at how they're playing, when you look at the form that they're in, when you look at the way that some of their players are mastering the ball, when you think about Arteta's tactical genius, is it going to matter? They can go to Tottenham and win. They can go to Old Trafford and win. They can go to Molyneux and win. And they can certainly beat Chelsea at home. Another reason Arsenal will not win the league is the words of Mikel Arteta. These words really did echo with me. Arteta said that he thinks that you can only drop four points between now and the end of the season. Only four between now and the end of the season. Bearing in mind, they've won nine already. They've won nine already. They're only allowed to drop four between now and the end of the season, which is one loss, one draw. We are effectively saying that Arsenal, out of 19 games, 10 left, nine in the bag already, nine wins plus 10, that Arsenal, out of 19, are going to win 17? That, to me, just sounds impossible. It isn't about Arteta. It's about simple maths. And yes, Mikel Arteta has the ability to surprise me. He has the ability to break records. He has the ability to, to, to change the way that I feel about him on countless occasions. But played 19, won 17. That's by Mikel Arteta's own estimations of what Arsenal were going to have to do. It's not that I think that's beyond them. It's I think that is beyond everyone. That is beyond everyone. Played 19, win 17. Draw one, lose one. I just think that's impossible for the league, let alone Arsenal. The Champions League. Now, look, you can say Manchester City are in the Champions League as well, but even... Even think about what's happening tonight. Arsenal have a very tough game against Porto, a game that is on a knife edge. Manchester City are through. Manchester City are used to this fight. This is new terrain for Arsenal Football Club, new terrain for Mikel Arteta. The arduous nature of European football combined with domestic football is so relentless. It's so tough. It's so grinding. And you are never more likely to drop points in your domestic campaign than off the back of playing European football. Are Arsenal realistically going to be able to juggle the arduous nature of European football and domestic football and come out on pole position with Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp hanging out. The Champions League could almost be to the detriment of Arsenal's title aspirations. Now, look, everybody knows that I don't think this, but some would say that Arsenal do not have that ruthless striker that is so necessary. Annoyingly... I would say Kai Havertz seems to be doing a pretty good impression of that kind of striker. But some disagree with me. Some will say that Arsenal needed a Tony, needed an Osherman. And when they go away to the Etihad, for example, you can't miss chances. You cannot miss opportunities. And some would argue that their lack of that clinical number nine could cost them. Another big weakness for Arsenal, according to some, is themselves. You know, if anybody else, if Liverpool or Manchester City had put the run together that this Arsenal team were on, if Liverpool or Manchester City was demonstrating the form that is on display so regularly from Mikel Arteta's team, we would have already awarded them the Premier League. But because it's Arsenal, we don't necessarily buy it. Because it's Arsenal, people ask the question. Because it's Arsenal, and we've seen capitulation in the past, people think that maybe Arsenal's biggest stumbling block is Arsenal themselves. Are they going to implode? Another reason is I've conducted my experiment. I've done the quick math so you don't have to. Arsenal have the toughest fixtures out of everyone. The average position that Arsenal will face for the rest of the season is ninth, higher than anyone else. So they also have the toughest fixtures. All right, and last but not least, it is Manchester City. Why are Manchester City going to win the Premier League? Fairly easy, this one, isn't it? The answer is Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola is an inherent winner. He is one of the best managers that has ever plied his trade. And stopping him, it really is some feat. When you think about the incredible manager that Jurgen Klopp is, when you think about the amount of times that those two have gone head-to-head -head in the Premier League, Jurgen Klopp, despite his brilliance, has only managed to defeat him once. Pep Guardiola is the guy. He is era-defining. This era belongs to him. We are all living in a Pep Guardiola world and we know quite how brilliant he can be. We know that when it most matters, they turn it on. When the pressure is most on, they win. When they need to go on a run, they will. 
when they have to win every game between now and the end of the season, they can do that. They have won three league titles in a row for a reason. They are treble winners for a reason. They have the experience. You know, Manchester City have chased down titles before. They have chased them down, hunted them down, hungry as they pursue a prey in the distance. They've done that before. They've also led from the front. They've also led from the front from day one and won the league at a canter. They can do it all. They know what it takes. They are a team built on winners and that experience is vital. Another reason is because they have the best player in the Premier League. I don't think that's hyperbolic. I don't think that's an exaggeration. Phil Foden is undoubtedly the best player in the Premier League this season. He is unplayable. He is masterful. He is magical. And he's a joy to watch. When he picks up the ball and he glides, moves inside, moves outside, the way that he can use both feet, his eye for a goal, and crucially, something that isn't acknowledged about Phil Foden. And I'm making this case as often as possible because I believe that he should be playing for England in a central midfield alongside Rice and Bellingham. People will say that it's too attacking. Phil Foden, watch him retrieve the ball. Watch him in a tackle. He's hard. He's game. Okay, he's small. He's slight. But he does win the ball. Very few players will win the ball further up the pitch than Phil Foden. And having him in Pep Guardiola's team is huge. Guardiola, particularly when you compare it to what's going on at Liverpool, seems to be very lucky with injuries this year. It just doesn't seem to be an issue for him the way that it is for others. When you saw the Liverpool team and the Manchester City team side by side, you could see the difference. Manchester City were basically full strength. Jack Grealish is also going to be back soon. After the international break, they are saying that Grealish is going to be back. He's going to have his full squad, a full squad of winners at City. OK, it's a small squad, but they're an half good. So Grealish coming back, his composure could be vital in a title run-in. I think Stefan Ortega slots in fairly well, fairly easily, fairly subtly to deputise for Edison. And generally speaking, it just feels like things are going quite well for Man City. I know this doesn't sound particularly insightful, but reasons why Man City will win the league is simply because they are Man City, because they are Pep Guardiola, because they have done it before, because of the track record, because they have won five out of the last six. History teaches us a lot about the future. Maybe, maybe it's going to happen again. Should we explore why they're not going to win it? We'll find out. Right, I've managed to think of four reasons why Manchester City aren't going to win the league. I think I've done quite well here, but there are four genuine reasons that Manchester City will not win the league. Those four reasons are, they have a very small squad. The squad is small. They only have 19 outfield players. So if any injury crisis does hit, considering the amount of competitions that they are still competing in, that could be catastrophic for their title aspirations. The Edison injury. Now look, I actually think that Stefan Ortega is going to do well. I think he's a very good goalkeeper, but if it doesn't go his way, if there are a few slip-ups, if things don't necessarily fall into place, if his confidence drops, the Edison injury really could be a huge blow to Manchester City's title aspirations. And if they don't win the league, we might look back on the Edison injury as being decisive. Two more reasons, and they're a little bit existential, but bear with me. The two reasons are Tottenham Hotspur and the Champions League. Tottenham Hotspur. Not necessarily a team that should be stopping a side like Manchester City winning a title, but history matters. Manchester City have never won at the new iteration of White Hart Lane. They have never won. Don't talk to me about the FA Cup. Not interested. They've never won there in the league. Manchester City struggle with Tottenham. Tottenham are Man City's bogey team. And don't you think there is something written in the stars when you think of Tottenham's history that Tottenham will defeat Man City in order to award Arsenal the league. Just think about who Tottenham are. Arsenal have won the league more at White Hart Lane than Tottenham have. It's so in keeping with Tottenham tradition to win the league for Arsenal by beating Manchester City, securing themselves fourth in the process. Well done. And then I think it's just the Champions League. We know how difficult it is. Of course, Manchester City can marry up Champions League football and a successful domestic campaign, but... To do that two years in a row, to win the Premier League and the Champions League, to do then the same thing again, Premier League, Champions League. I, I don't think it happens. And I basically wonder if the effort and energy expelled in the Champions League could cost Manchester City their place at the top of their domestic league. Right, there we have it. I have tried to do this in the most honourable way. I have tried to do it in a way that is lacking in any sort of bias. I have been totally and utterly bipartisan, I think. I've tried to present all of the facts, tried to present why 
Arsenal may win the league, why they may not. Why Liverpool may, why they may not. Why City may, why they may not. And I think I have done it in a fair fashion. I hope I have. Will you now do me a favour? You've heard my reasoning. Will you let me know in the comments below who do you think is going to win the Premier League? All things considered, let me know your answer in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it if you did. Please click subscribe. And I'll see you all in a bit. Ta-da!